launch. We we know when that is. We've got some new uh, some new Null's Dormu artwork, yes. which is very nice. And again, makes us think: How will he be involved in this expansion? Because if you take a look, right, this is this is some of the crazy shit. Where is the trailer? Yeah, the very last line of this trailer, and hopefully the all, yeah, all that matters is this moment. Uh, Morazond says that in the End Time Dungeon. Sure does. So, I think <laughs> this very much is them playing with things. I think it's fairly apparent that Bozdor move Morazond, whatever that, that is, is going to feature uh, pretty heavily. I mean, Jared did a big old video on that. I, we're going to do like a little update earlier yeah. next week, but yeah, that could be interesting. I... Honestly, I like the time. Tra I like the time bullshit. I really do. And I, like I have done before, I like that in uh, in other IP, right? In other media, I think it could yeah. be a really fun way to explore things. Uh, yes, it can be a shit show, and you you know we don't want any of this one legion spanning infinite timelines, <laughs> bizarre shit. Um, I think that was like Afrosabi craziness uh, a little uh, while ago. Right, of course. Of yeah, course, yeah, course. yeah. I think that's kind of attributed uh, mm. there. But stuff like the Caverns of Time? I mean, fuck yeah. Actually, that's the thing. Valdrasis. Yes. How did you find the Bronze Quest thing? I thought it was frustrating because I want to see substantially more of it. That's what uh, I'll say. I really hope that the... Uh, okay. I don't want the Bronze subplot to have to wait for a couple patches. But I also want for it to wait for a couple patches because they usually have a lot more time for patch story. Whereas when they're doing everything in expansion, it kind of gets crammed together and kind of rushed through a little yeah, bit quickly. Yeah. So I want to see how that goes because it was really fun. All of the, the time travel, alternate timeline stuff was like really good and really enjoyable. There's a lot of effort put into like how it felt. And I was like, oh, this is, this is playing with kind of atmosphere. And you can tell there's a lot of inspiration they take from FF in a whole bunch of ways as expansion. But there's specific bits I'm like, oh, you know what you're doing. You literally know how to actually make a bit of quest that if you're paying attention, you're going to go, oh, this is good content. I'm enjoying this. I'm getting different emotional vibes from it all. And there's enough talking about, and this, I literally just realized this when I was sitting here, right? Um, I didn't really draw too closely before because I was thinking of the, and I haven't listened to the podcast where you and um, Jared talk about end time, so you probably touched on a lot of this stuff. But the idea of Murazond being old god corrupted, right? Yeah. That was the original kind of take. It was the end time was that. That was, oh, he was told he was going to die by Amethyl. Sorry, he was shown the moment of his death. And that was supposed to be the kind of, that was like, that pushed him to the edge and then the old god's whispers took him over it. But given how the primalists are very much the anti-titans here, going, the titans are bad. What they did was wrong. It was one of the first lines you hear from... Razageth? Yeah, Razageth. Is wash away the stain of order in one of the cutscenes. And that's the thing where there's so much of, hey, did they mean anything when they said Amanthul showed him his death and that was what meant him, like, drove him crazy? No. Are they going to be able to take a plot point, pull it through and develop it? Yes. And funny enough, when, <laughs> when people praise oh, FF14 for planning well, yep. it is actually very often not a case of planning well. Now, they do plan well, yes, but things like the Asians, they had no idea where they were taking them. Yeah, so they, they do a good job of setting up loads of potential in FF14, right? And uh, you know, to a lot of people, that can end up just being like, oh, you're laying a mystery box. People only talk about the J.J. Abrams mystery box whenever it has a really shitty, unsatisfying conclusion that's like way less interesting than mm -hmm. the mystery. FF14 is continually set up interesting mysteries. They've continually given themselves loads of room to do things in the future, right? Loads of cool things that they can draw upon. Mm. And, uh, you know, they say they likes the role of the Asians, the actual full backstory of the Asians. That stuff that they did not know when they were doing A Realm Reborn. Um, I mean, who knows? Maybe yeah. they didn't even know when they were doing Heavensward. I mean, that's the thing. They, even... They've commented on this. The thing that they did do, though, is they took all the things they'd set up and they pulled them forward into the new story in a really successful and satisfying way. That's the thing that Blizzard has to do. So, yeah. I mean, I, I kind of think about all this, like, time shit and all the stuff that's possible. And, uh, I don't know, I'm a little bit more hopeful, to be honest. I think a lot of that, too, is because I've got quite a lot of goodwill because of 9.2.5. That's it. 9.2, and 
less 9.2.5 for me, it's 9.2. Because I always, and I feel a little bit like, ha, look, I was right the whole time. But I really enjoyed the side quests in Death Mortis. Yeah, I thought there was a lot of really, you could tell the devs had time and put a lot of love into it. Maybe that's because they were like managed to get 9.2, because 9.1 was kind of seeming a little bit uh, quick at the door. Not literally, but in terms of, it certainly didn't feel right. It didn't feel like it was everything went to, yeah. went to plan there, despite what they say. And also there's no 9.3. So it feels like a lot of what was put in there was 9.2, or a lot of the effort there. And that felt really like, those side quests were very much, hey, here's characters. Here's some character motivation. Here's some character development. Look at that. Would you have imagined seeing that in World of Warcraft in the modern day? Likely not, but it was all there in side quests. And then I had the issues of, oh, I'm, I'm loving Xerath Mortis. This is great. And then it goes, go speak to Bolvar. I'm like, bastard. I don't want to deal with that character because they can't do him correctly or they won't do him correctly. And I feel a little bit of the same in Dragonflight, but it's like the plot problems are a lot worse or a lot, um, a lot less bad, a lot yeah, better. Yeah, the, yeah. The, the plot is a little bit better overall. Even though the old stones feel like the sigils too to me a little bit, maybe they'll fix up by the time it pulls like towards the end. But all of the side quests are great, and when you're going through the zones, a lot of the zone is basically, hey, this is a big side quest to introduce you to the zones, peoples. So that has all of that side quest energy of here's accurately or accurately, I guess building a faction in a way that feels good, feels emotionally satisfying, and everyone's going, oh, yes, this is. These are people. Yeah. These are actually realized people in the world. Oh, yes, please. And they clearly were able to do that in Zeth Mortis. So that's where like all of my goodwill comes from. It's like, oh, you know how to do content. You've you've proved that you can do side content in 9.2. If you can do real content, real content, that's not really fair. If you can do mandatory content with the same quality as your side content, which feels a little bit backwards, but if you can do that, then I'll enjoy it a lot more. And that proved true, which I'm like, Hell yeah. Yeah, so I mean look overall, potential wise, I actually think we're in a we're in a pretty good state. And with all that Morazon stuff, there there just is, I think, big potential. That's an interesting mystery. It's a mystery that in the like the lore community we, we have been thinking about for a long time, right? People have wondered what his death looked like. People have wondered what uh, his lines in the end time dungeon actually mean. So this is a great example of where they can, they can do what the FF devs have done well. They can take those things that were set up. They can pull them forward into the future. They can do so successfully. I think they're certainly going to have a bit of a struggle because of skepticism with uh, you know aspects of the recent story. Obviously, Sylvanas, Shadowlands, all of that. But I mean, per. Per what's been said by a lot more, like quite a lot of people in the know, uh, this is an expansion that is free from the interesting development circumstances of the last time. Because I, I know a lot of people are like, oh yeah, just roll out Afrasabi as a convenient excuse. And uh, I suppose in a way, like you are right to think that because ultimately so many of the issues of Shadowlands uh, are things that Afrasabi was not involved in because he was not at the company. He was not on that team, right? That is totally the case. Um, but... That being said, his job title was creative director. So, you know, people think about the lore, they think about Steve Denoser. In terms of title, Afrasabi was more senior uh, than Steve. He was the creative director. And if we think again about the two-year development cycle, right? Ian is saying, no, actually, we're happy with the amount of dev time Dragonflight has had. This was something we were working on since before Shadowlands came out. Well... That also means that Shadowlands is something that they were working on since before Battle for Azeroth came out, right? Hmm. So a few of those very big structures, they, they, they were Afrasabi setups. I think patch 8.1 is the last time that he was actually uh, like involved in working on World of Warcraft related stuff before. I think he was shuffled over to another team to like just get rid of him for a bit yep. and then he ended up getting the boot. And all of that is to say that Dragonflight will have been significant. Well, it will not have had any of that old creative direction, um, you know, sort of be, be involved in it, yeah. which is a good thing. It's it's one of those things, right? I mean, you you might not have enjoyed, say, the Last Jedi the most, but I think we could all agree <laughs> it would have been better if you know Ryan Johnson had had just done the third one because then at least two parts of the trilogy would have been done under one vision. 
uh, that, that sort of thing. And it's, it's as if we kind of ended up in this bizarre situation with World of Warcraft, right? Where a whole bunch of this vision was set out for like two years and then all that stuff goes, you know, obviously goes to shit. Um, and now I suppose we're in a situation where it's, it's relatively speaking a new team handling the lore stuff. I mean, it's people who've been in the company for a while, but in terms of team leadership. Yeah. Yeah, so like, I guess all the macro narrative stuff will be concepted from scratch, I suppose. The things of the in the plot that they would be laying down as like set in stone things that they can't change, those will have been locked in two years ago. Well, not fully locked in, but work will have began two years ago. Yeah. But it, it is kind of interesting to think then how much room they will have had to, uh, you know, to, to maneuver when it comes to responding to feedback. I mean, like, certainly my, my initial impression has been quite a bit better. Yeah, I think there's... Having played through a lot of it, and not actually fully finished it, because you have to do a whole bit of endgame before you get the last chapter, so... And there's also all, like, the raid storyline and stuff that we don't know about, which yeah. obviously is tied to the whole thing, because, you know, the boss is Raskazeth. But there's this kind of... Uh, there's two parts to it, right? There's a creative direction, and there's the execution. Create... <sighs> Bad creative direction does not necessarily no, does not necessitate bad execution. Mm. You can have great execution of a bad creative direction and still have something that's enjoyable and fun. In this case, they have largely failed on creative direction and execution of a plot and of like the actual macro narrative, the the lore that people are like the 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 important parts that people pay attention to and will then climb upon. And this is what I say in my review, where it's like a lot of the mistakes that had Shadowlands be climbed on excepting the jailer of course because that was you know nothing's quite as grim as that but the jailer like or everything else is kind of the execution's still not super there there's lots of things i'm thinking if you're trying to be smart and holding off on telling us stuff because you think it's like a little bit better it's the same problem of all of what well, all of the context is in the writer's room not all the context makes it to the player that's, that's happened challenge. again for a plot and I feel like I've been shuffled along and then sometimes like, I think my, my biggest thing that I talk about is how the, the biggest lesson they didn't learn from FF is making their villains be super like humanized as soon as humanly possible. Obviously, yeah. they, they were a little bit slow on that with um, Emmett, a little bit slow on that with Elidibus as well in FF. But generally speaking, the point is by the end of like a story beat, you know your villain is a human or not a human, but you know, you, you humanize them, you empathize with them, you go, okay, you're just someone doing the doing a bad thing for a good reason. And the primalists have that set up potentially with all yeah. the anti-Titan stuff in the same way that everyone in the Shadowlands had that set up, theoretically. It's just none of it ever came together in a way that felt right. And I'm afraid of that happening here again because it seems that the same problems where all of the main characters are so, I guess, preoccupied with doing the next plot point, doing the next beat, doing the next thing, engaging in like, solving the, the immediate situation no one ever sits down and goes right let's have a chat about who these primalists are let's have a chat about what Raska is actually saying you know the there's never a point where like say Khadgar or because I mean Kalik would know everything but like there's no, there's no point where someone with like Khadgar or even the player character or any of the expedition members sit down and go so um all these primalists seem to have a real beef you guys could you you know tell us what actually happened this might happen of course but at the minute, it hasn't. And you've just got this problem of you're sitting there going, I don't. Why is no one addressing their very valid complaints? And you kind of feel like they're just cartoon bad guys. Yeah. And that's definitely not the intent because you read between the lines, you can see there's loads of potential there, but they never actually let you feel any of that. So I think the execution's a little bit lacking on A-plot, but all the execution of like atmosphere and doing what World of Warcraft used to do really well is all there. Yeah. It's just it's not really there in the in the major plot. And um, even though the creative direction seems to be a little bit better, because they've got like themes that they'll probably carry with. Mm. Instead of Shadowlands was started with one theme and ended with another. Everyone's like, what sort of whiplash is this? Yeah, yeah. I guess one thing we have not seen the cutscenes. Mm -hmm. Alright, we've not seen the cutscenes, so there is undoubtedly some narrative context and uh you know, it's, it's fine to have Captain Exp Exposition, have a TLDR of a cutscene, but that's pretty damn different to actually experiencing the cutscene, how it's performed and all of that. So, yeah, that is the like the one sort of puzzle piece that ain't through yet. And they've, all, they've, they've been better on that as well. The yeah. cutscenes are pretty nice. 
even their in-game storytelling in terms of NPC acting while you're doing stuff is good too. Yeah. yeah. And there's also a lot of dialogue that happens as you're playing. I know they got good at that like a decent while ago, but they seem to have gotten better at it where you get like history lessons as you're doing something fairly menial. Yeah. So you're like, oh yeah, I can't understand this. Nice week. Sir Mar had plenty of that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I remember right. So there you go. Overall, pretty good things happening. 